Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Do you know what blind mole rats and sharks have in common? Wait, you mean the mole rat? You mean the naked mole rat? Yeah, but in this case, it's the furry version from the Eastern Mediterranean. Hmm, what, they don't get cancer? Yes, you could guess. Wait, seriously? <laughs> Absolutely. Not a single case of spontaneous tumor development has been recorded amongst thousands of captive animals over a 40-year period. Hmm. And also chemical carcinogens did not induce tumor growth in mole rats. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but not for the rat. 100% <laughs> of the mice and rats developed tumors in those sa with those same chemicals. You know, it b would be cool to see if the mole rats had something unique in their genome. You know, exactly. And that's what Fang et al. describes uh, when they uh, sequence the genome of the mole rat Spallax. And by the way, they're not rats at all. They, they're actually closely uh, related to the guinea pigs, and they diverged about uh, 41 million years ago. Getting back to cancer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's all about the environmental adaptation. And in subterranean tunnels, there's low oxygen and also very high carbon dioxide level. Hmm. In most animals, this oxidative stress will trigger the P53 gene to kill the stressed cells through a process called apoptosis. Ah, but the mole rats, they have a neat little trick. Mm. Um, to prevent cell death, they actually have a mutation in the P53 gene, and the substitution inactivates the apoptosis pathway. Hmm. But wait, that is exactly the opposite of what you would expect. I mean, P53 mutations are common in most tumors, and Martinez et al. described P53 mutations in 12 tumor types. Uh, so you'd expect that these animals are actually highly susceptible to tumors. Well, you know, that's where they're really <laughs> clever. The low P53 indirectly triggers an interferon response called transcription of repeat activating interferon or train. Okay. And train. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> long. Tra train generates multiple transcripts of repeats in the genome, which triggers the antiviral response. Uh, IFNB1 is potentially a highly effective mechanism for tumor suppression. So they figured out an interferon treatment for tumor a couple million years ago before we even got close to it. I isn't that amazing? <laughs> and, and it's just funny how adaptations show us the extremes of what biological systems are capable of. You know, we often see vision regression in animals that live in caves or subterranean environments. Um, how is that reflected in their genome? You know, vision and pigmentation are usually the first things to go. Emmerling and Springer found that a decrease in retinal light exposure led to an increase in the number of retinal pseudogenes, and these are the genes that, that are inactivated. Pseudogenes are genes that have lost their uh, protein coding ability. That's right. The authors actually looked for these genes and found their downstream pathways were inactivated. And you know, our blind mole rat does have a vestigial light perception that can distinguish between light and dark. Yeah, I mean, technically they're not really blind, not really. but uh, they just call it blind ro mole rats. But interesting, the, the mole rat brain is twice as large as that of a rat with a similar body size. And that is probably due to the enlargement of the motor structures and the som somatosensory structures. Hmm. It's fascinating how a genome can be read. It's, uh, it's like an encyclopedia that tells us about an animal's biology down to exactly what they can see and even feel. Speaking of feeling, another interesting adaptation is, is a mutation in the sodium channel that is thought to protect it to, from induced pain due to the high carbon dioxide levels. Hmm. This, so this is an adaptive trait which has arisen independently in hypercapnia exposed species such as the cave microbat, um, myotas, by convergent evolution. Yeah, and, and you know, if you really think about it by coincidence, bats and mole rats are some of the most long-lived small animals. You know, the mole rat can get to 22 years old and some small bats can reach 45 years old. Very old for <laughs> a small animal like that. And I would like to know the answer to that little secret of the fountain <laughs> of youth. These extreme examples can tell us a lot about biological systems and even things like preventing brain damage and cancer. You know, that's a good reason why these animals should be protected. Who knows what we can learn from them? And Unfortunately, they are at great risk because they are so specialized, they cannot respond to rapid changes in their environment. That's exactly true. But unfortunately, we're out of time today. Thanks for tuning into our show. Please do feel free to reach out to us with any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, or any feedback. We love hearing from you. Take care and have a great day. Bye. Bye. See you next time.